The first electrophile we're going to consider in reactions of enols and enolates is the elemental halogen, X2, where X is either bromine, chlorine, or iodine. X2 is electrophilic because we can think of one of the halogen atoms as a good leaving group. This means that the other halogen atom, in some sense, wants to accept a pair of electrons, which is our definition of a good electrophile. Under either neutral conditions or conditions with a small amount of acid to catalyze formation of the enol, the enol intermediate appears and in the presence of X2 undergoes halogenation at the alpha carbon. Mechanistically, the first step of this process involves tautomerization of the starting ketone or aldehyde to the corresponding enol. And under the conditions of this reaction, generation of the enol is thermodynamically controlled. That means we'll end up with the most stable enol intermediate possible. So for example, when we have the possibility of the formation of two different enols, the more substituted of the two will form selectively. After this tautomerization process generates the enol intermediate, the nucleophilic enol reacts with the electrophilic X2 compound, elemental halogen. And this occurs through coordination of the pi electrons of the enol to the electrophilic X atom and cleavage of the XX bond toward the other halogen atom. We can think of this as an A sub E step, association of an electrophile from the perspective of the pi system of the enol, and an S in 2 step from the perspective of the elemental halogen. We can also draw an additional curved arrow here so that the resonance form we end up with satisfies the octet rule. This avoids a carbocation forming at this carbon here. We end up with an intermediate that resembles a protonated carbonyl compound. And at this point, some base comes along and deprotonates this compound. And this may occur, for example, under basic workup conditions, with the base being either water or hydroxide. This proton transfer generates the product, which is a neutral carbonyl compound in which a halogen has substituted for a hydrogen in the original compound. Since this occurred through a mechanism in which the hydrogen was deprotonated ultimately during the tautomerization process and the X atom was attacked, in other words, served as an electrophile, in this key step number three, this is an electrophilic substitution. From the carbonyl compound's perspective, what we've done is exchanged one electrophile, H+, for another, E+. And the cool thing about this reaction synthetically is that it converts an atom that is intrinsically nucleophilic in the starting carbonyl compound, the alpha carbon, to one that is intrinsically electrophilic in the product. With the halogen group there, we now have the potential of that to act as a leaving group in a future step and substitute it for a nucleophile. For example, if we hit this with an amine or an ammonia surrogate, as in the Gabriel synthesis that we've seen previously, we could convert this alpha halo carbonyl compound into an alpha amino compound. And this can be a nice approach, for example, for the synthesis of amino acids if we can convert this carbonyl group into a carboxylic acid at some later point. When we treat a carbonyl compound with base and an elemental halogen, we end up with an enolate intermediate reacting with X2. Here again, the ultimate result is halogenation through an electrophilic substitution mechanism, but the situation is a little bit different for mechanistic reasons we'll see in a second. In the example shown here, notice that there is only one alpha hydrogen linked to this alpha carbon on the right, and the other alpha carbon is part of a phenyl group and lacks alpha hydrogens. So the only so-called enolizable hydrogen, the only hydrogen that can be deprotonated, deprotonated to form an enol or enolate is the one I've highlighted in blue. In the first step of the mechanism, the base here, hydroxide, removes this proton to form an enolate intermediate. The next step is highly analogous to the key step of halogenation under neutral or acidic conditions. The enolate attacks one of the X atoms in the elemental halogen and the other departs with a pair of electrons. This is the A sub E plus S in 2 step, or here we can just think about it as sort of a simple S in 2 from this resonance structure with a lone pair on the alpha carbon. This gives the substituted product, and here Br minus, or more generally X minus. So the mechanism here is highly analogous to the one we just saw. However, it is important that there only be one enolizable hydrogen in the starting material. Say instead of the two methyl groups linked to this carbon, we had an additional hydrogen linked to that carbon. So say our product after one round of halogenation is something like this. Consider the acidity of this hydrogen 
relative to the acidity of the alpha hydrogens in the carbonyl compound that we would have started with. During the halogenation process, we linked a electron withdrawing group to the alpha carbon. This makes the alpha hydrogen of the product even more acidic than the alpha hydrogens of the original starting material. This is going to lead to an additional halogenation taking place. If that's what you want, that's fine, but it's not possible to stop this at the monohalogenation stage when we have more than one alpha hydrogen linked to the alpha carbon. The major product, under basic conditions, involves replacement of all the alpha hydrogens with halogen atoms. For methyl ketones, this leads to an interesting outcome. After three rounds of halogenation, we end up with a trihalomethyl ketone, in this case a tribromomethyl ketone, when Br2 is used as the electrophilic halogen. And in this intermediate, we've got a carbon linked to three pretty good electron withdrawing groups in the bromines. This means that negative charge at that carbon is pretty well stabilized. The tribromomethyl group is a pretty good leaving group, in other words. We've got a pretty good leaving group in here in the presence of a pretty good nucleophile, hydroxide. And since that leaving group is linked to an acyl group, we've got the ingredients for nucleophilic acyl substitution, which we've seen before. That proceeds via an AD sub N followed by E beta mechanism. I won't draw that out in detail, but you can on your own. And that leads to a carboxylic acid intermediate. The OH minus nucleophile displaces CBr3 minus, which is again a pretty stable anion due to the three electron withdrawing bromines linked to carbon. The final step here is just a proton transfer from the acidic carboxylic acid to the basic tribromomethyl anion. This leads to the products you see on the slide, one of which is a molecule with a saturated carbon linked to three halogen atoms called a haloform, or in this specific case, bromoform. Since this reaction generates haloform, it's called the haloform reaction. And ultimately what it is, is three halogenations followed by nucleophilic acyl substitution by hydroxide, generating ultimately a carboxylate or a carboxylic acid after acidic workup, bromoform, and three equivalents of water via the use of OH- as a base to deprotonate the methyl ketone.